At the beginning of the year, I did a vision board and I'm blown away by what has happened. So I wanna share with you exactly what I did and what has unfolded. back to my channel. I am financial planner Canna Campbell. Before we start today's video, I want to share some really exciting news with you and that is my Money Mindset Manifestation Program is live and ready for you. This has taken six months for me to build. It's all based upon my own personal experiences in fine-tuning my money mindset and applying manifestation towards my financial goals and dreams. It's an incredible program Program, you're going to absolutely love it. So I have linked in the video description box below all the details so you can go and check it out for yourself. Now I haven't done a vision board for years but at the beginning of the year I was doing the Gabby Bernstein 21 day uh, manifesting challenge for fun and part of the task is this, uh, you have to do a vision board. So I put together this vision board and I put images of a beach because I really want to take my family on an international holiday somewhere warm and tropical and I put on the vision board you know the my need to stay fit and strong and healthy so I put images of meals of exercise equipment I also put down some of my financial goals my desire to expand my passive income streams achieve my financial goals uh, make sure that I stay on top of our budget so I put very special images that of things that I just love and I really looked at the textures the color scheme all sorts of things and then on top of that also put down my podcast and helping them see go from strength to strength so I put together a beautiful collage using Canva because it's quick and easy I can tweak and update it on the go but also I can access my vision board at my desktop and also on my phone so it made a lot of sense doing it that way now I have been regularly looking at my vision board but within gosh I think maybe a couple of not even a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of days of doing the vision board and looking at it and making sure that when I look at it, I look at it with a really open mind. I relax, I almost like breathe into the vision board and really uphold it in my head and my heart. When I looked at all of these different things, I wanted to make sure that I was remaining very open, that I wouldn't just like hone in on that image and think, no, that's all I want. That's exactly what I want. And freaky things happened. So first of all, my podcast, How Do They Afford That?, which is co-hosted with Michael Thompson, uh, went to number two in the world across educational podcasts, which is freaky. Like we, we beat Jordan Peterson for that week, which is insane. Like we were up there with Mel Robbins. Then something else really freakishly happened. Michael Thompson is a writer. He's just written a book, which is called How To Be Remembered. And he's actually even sold, this is his first book, he's sold the movie rights to this book. And we're talking major Hollywood producers fighting over this book and incredible actors lined up to potentially make this movie. Anyway, in my vision board, as I said, I had it, I kept it very open, open for an element of fluidity, the universe to kind of lead and guide me as to what's better. Now, about a month after doing my vision board, Michael approached me and said, my agent, my book agent, happened to go and listen to our podcasts and she's told me she really wants a book out of us. Would you have time or would you be interested at all in writing a book together? called How Do They Afford That? I was blown away, I was lost for words. Michael Thompson's a really busy guy. His book is, you know, has been translated into like 13 different languages so far. I was like, oh my goodness, how incredible. I am now gonna be writing a book and I'm not only gonna be writing a book, I'm gonna be writing a book with someone who has a huge amount of experience and a huge amount of success. Not that it's about money at this for this at all, it's actually about what I'm going to be able to learn and the opportunities and how I'm going to be able to fine tune my own personal and professional skill set when it comes to putting pen to paper. So that happened. We've now put together the, the pitch, um, ready for the, the agent to take to the publishers and it's quite incredible. And 
I, I'm just blown away by what has happened just in that capacity. And you will see in the vision board, there's a picture of Michael, there's a picture of my existing books, and there's a picture of just keeping it a, a tile for our podcast. I can't believe those two goals have literally organically just come together and they're on my vision board. The other things that I wanted to do was increase my passive income streams. And I had that in my vision board. Again, freaky things have happened, which initially I thought was a huge setback um, and really frustrating. But to cut a long story short, this year, Tom and I have had to really look at our finances, obviously rising interest rates, the cost of living. Um, we've had new additional expenses that we've just had to just cop on the chin. And I thought, gosh, you know, we had to retweak our finances and it was frustrating because it felt like a huge step backwards and it actually conflicted with what I was had on my vision board. However, again, I had to breathe into it, lean into it, trust it and use my vision board, I guess, as a, a guiding light. And within about three weeks of having this setback and having to rechange and tweak things, it actually became very quickly apparent that this is actually a step back, but is allowed us to actually make a bigger and better step forward. So in fact, in what I thought was a frustrating setback and challenge has actually been a huge blessing in disguise. And not only have we increased our passive income, I've actually organically added additional passive income streams to our wealth and is only going to help, I guess, our wealth grow again more consistently on a sustainable level, which is mind blowing. So whilst I have a vision board of what I want, I've created this space for just to let things flow organically. The other thing I had on my vision board was really focusing on my fitness and health. About 10 years ago, I broke my elbow and I had some special tests done and they told me I was at very high risk of early onset of osteoporosis. In fact, I pretty much had it. And I made lots of changes in my life, but nothing just nothing ever kind of seemed like it really had changed however randomly out of the blue I was at an event and I was chatting to this doctor and I was just talking to her about how a mother and you always put your health down the bottom of the list it's always about your kids and it, you know and anyway she said to me come to my clinic I'm going to do a full health check of you and she did a bone density test but a very detailed one and it's quite incredible my health is better than it's ever been before I, this year I've really been focusing on keeping a consistent rhythm and routine and making sure that I really adjust my mindset when it comes to exercise, focusing on how good I feel afterwards. And that's what I think about when I look at those images of a fresh healthy meal or look at that image of the sneakers and the weights. Because to me when I look at it, I look at it as though the process of picking up the weights, putting on the shoes, going for a run, going to the gym, moving my body. Now in this very detailed comprehensive test that I got done. My health is the best health I've ever had. And not only am I no longer at risk of early onset of osteoporosis, I'm actually at no risk at all. I'm in a very, very healthy bone density zone and I don't really need to worry. So my health is actually scientifically changed quite dramatically. The other things that have happened in my life is my home. Now, as I explained, if you know what happened to me during frugal February, it was just constant, like the house was literally crumbling around us. It was almost like the house had a, a curse. It was bizarre. And we couldn't do anything to fix it. Everything was linked to each other. We couldn't do one thing, so therefore we couldn't do this, we couldn't do that, we couldn't do that. But then in March, this shift happened and you will see in this vision board, I have images of interior, what I wanted the bedrooms to look like, what I wanted the textures, the color scheme, the feel of the rooms to, to look like, keeping them fresh, keeping them light. Anyway, weird things happened in March and it was like it just broke the curse. All of a sudden one thing could be done and it was weird things happened out of the blue. Things that were stuck in storage, things that were stuck overseas, um, equipment, tradesmen which are impossible to get right now in Australia. It just all organically happened. So I get phone calls from builders saying, a job just got cancelled, we can actually come in and now do this work for you. And the wardrobe company was basically, I was gonna have to wait like nine months to get these wardrobes installed. Called me up going, actually, uh, something's happened. We can actually do your wardrobes now, but we can only do them on this week. Do you mind if we come and let in right there? And I was like, yep, do it. And literally within the space of two weeks, all of a sudden our house was put back together again, but put back together in a way that I wanted it to be. And it 
it reflects so close to what I've actually got in those images, but maybe elements of it actually even better. So these are the images I'm gonna share with you right now of what I had on my vision board. And now I'm gonna share with you some of the images from inside my home so you can see how close I have come to successfully achieving my vision board with great successes. Now the last thing I wanna share with you in this video, and there were lots of cool things that happened this vision board, but there's the image of this island. As I said, I really want to take my kids and obviously Tom as a family uh, to a tropical holiday, but our savings got completely wiped out with all this water damage and uh, all our emergency money got wiped out. And if you know from my podcasts and seeing me on Instagram, you'll know that I had to stop a holiday savings plan. So we, I had this vision of wanting to go on a holiday, but also with no money to pay for that holiday. Now, Tom thought I was a little bit crazy wanting to go on a holiday and putting it on the vision board, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna put it in there, hold the vision for it and keep myself open to something that might happen. Anyway, about a month ago, we were lying in bed and Tom looked into his frequent flyer accounts. He's like, wow, I've actually got a lot of points. And then he went digging further and he's like, I've got all these credits from COVID. See, Tom had to cancel a lot of flights because of COVID. So he had this huge credit. And the things with the credits is they have to be used in a certain way. So he hadn't been able to use them for his normal short-term flights. They had to be used up in chunks. So to cut a long story short, Tom did some research, checked all these different flights, and he found a way of actually being able to book a holiday for five of us to go to Bali, which is where I wanted to go in my vision board. I wanted to go either Fiji or Bali. So before we knew it, out of the blue, we had managed to be able to book flights uh, pretty much using points. Then another freaky thing happened. We're looking at accommodation, and because we're a family of five, we have to book two bedrooms. And we were like, oh my gosh, the cost of accommodation is gonna just blow out for us now that we're a family of five. So Tom randomly called up the hotel, explained our situation, explained the ages of our kids, and they actually agreed, that's fine, you can book a one bedroom apartment or a one bedroom hotel room, but we just need to make sure that you book one of a certain size. So that immediately cut down our cost of accommodation. Now I have a separate savings account where I've been putting little bits of money here and there into this savings account. So I'm actually going to have just enough in time to pay for this accommodation before we go on holiday, plus also have some spending money. And the hotel was so amazing. They actually said, you don't need to pay a deposit or pay up front. We will hold that room for you. We'll honor the price and we can book it in and pay for it closer to the time. So again, it's been quite freaky how the universe has just let it, well, I've let the universe work its magic. I've held faith and confidence in the universe. And I really think a lot of this is to do with a vision board. So if you're gonna do a vision board, or you're thinking about doing a vision board, this is what I recommend you do. Look at your goals and dreams for this year. Use a platform such as Canva because that's great because you can quickly and easily change and edit your vision board as you come across you know, different ideas or different goals or different images or things that really resonate with you. Get creative with your vision board. I really stuck to a color scheme for my vision board that makes me feel inspired, makes me feel fresh, makes me feel open, makes me feel motivated everything. So you can see I've used an underlying color scheme of blues and whites, very relaxing, soothing colors. I've also used keywords. I've also used images of animals. I've also used interior locations. I've even got a materialistic goal in there, which is a Chanel handbag. And what I recommend you do is try and look at your vision board every single day. But as you're looking at your vision board and you're looking at the ultimate vision, you need to be thinking and imagining all the steps involved to get you there. So as I mentioned about looking at the weights and the sneakers, I would think about picking up that weight and moving it, because that is what's going to take me to my end result. I look at the picture of the sneakers and I imagine myself in the morning, putting my sneakers on, doing my shoelaces up, tying them up nice and tight, and running out the door, going for a good jog, or heading to my local gym where I get on an exercise bike. Don't just think about the end results, think about this, the beginning, the middle, 
and the end. The steps, the progress that you have to go through and also even imagine yourself as you're looking at your vision board successfully working through any setbacks and challenges with a sense of faith and confidence in the universe. Now if you want to learn more about vision boards in more detail and how to apply them to your own financial goals and dreams I do talk about vision boards in my new program that I have just launched and I go into a lot more detail with you about this but I just wanted to share with you my incredible successes and how having a vision board has really blown my mind. It's something I will never not do ever again and in this course I actually share with you some really clever hacks that I have in my life where you can have your vision board secretly hidden all around you and particularly around the magic of key words. All right everyone thank you so much for listening I will see you next Thursday on Sugar Mama TV so please make sure you're subscribed. Ciao for now.